Good evening and welcome to this special edition of Inside Story, where we feature one of our talented Calypso and Soca artists and the winners of the various categories of the just concluded Vinci Mass 2016. I'm Ashisia Sam, stay with us for this entertaining and informative package. Two islands and keys are waiting to be discovered. Take a look at us now. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Welcome back. Mass Band Blundy Bird and the Friends was named the Band of the Year for Vinci Mass 2016. Band leader Elroy Blundy Bird Boyd spoke with the API's Eana Bob on their 2016 presentation, his feeling on yet another win, and the different things he would like to see happen in Vinci Carnival. Band of the Year 2016, Blundy Bird and Friends. Please introduce your full name for the audience, please. Oh, no. yeah. I am Blondie Board. Eric, but first thing I have to say thanks to all the masqueraders and all the people who make it and all the sponsors who helped me to achieve the other goal this time again this year. So I have to say thanks to them for because they make the thing work. Just give us a short, just a short description of what you presented this year for Vinci Mass 2016. Well, when we and our artists come up with the idea. Our artists are the constants, the man of the most man in the country right now. So when we come up with this idea now, we sit down, me, he and Gart, my right hand man, because Gart is a co-owner of the band, it's me and he running things. So we come up with this idea, we just sit down the trailway together and come up with this idea. And when we say temptation, we actually mix the old with the new. Because what we actually do, we come from a biblical point of view, where you notice our queen was still playing temptation with the woman with the apple, and then we still have a section with that and then we mix it now within you because I feel mass is more educational so we take the temptation and mix it with we're going on if you notice we had a section named Molly Worries and we had like Scarlet Woman and them kind of thing so we mix up the old within you because if you bring in mass now you have to teach people something and this is where we make we good as it relates to the challenges now um you know for every whatever it is we do there are some challenges that mass I'm sure mass bands face so could you just enlighten us about some of those challenges? Well, for, for our band, I could talk for our band. For our band, the only challenge we have is actually we don't have a place. We permanent register. Right now we have like Uptown, Uptown Hill. That's our main office. But we actually, this is the only problem we had this year. It was very late in terms of building our king and queen because remember we had to move from behind the post office day because it was breaking down and then they come I have to say thanks to INS because INS come and buy the building where we are now and they, and they tell me we could steady for the time. So it was kind of late because it's the first time we had this big set of challenge. We had to give me, me girls and all my boys who work with me pips because we built four cars through in a week and a half. We had to build the junior king and queen. And the night when we built in the king and queen, all nine o'clock, we still was well in. People surprised, especially we part the culture man to try to see we in park. And we go park and go still capture the king of the band title. It was very good for our group. Our group was very good. But that's the only challenge we have because we have some close friends who actually take care of the sponsorship of the band. So we have no problem in that field. Right? And what are some of the categories you won? Well, only let me see, two category we didn't want. We didn't want the junior queen and we didn't want the queen of the band. Right? But almost every other thing we won. Right? It was great. And with, 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 with me now, with me, my work as well. Winning is a, is a natural thing to me. So I don't feel no way when I go over sleep. But with the youth and the girls and them who actually is working with them, them actually hype up right now, they're still on a high. <laughs> oh, <that. laughs> Well, they should be because you cop almost everything. Yes, we're doing that for years, you know, because if we check it out, where we bring um, where we bring a glimpse of Kingston, I had a trophy home where I get from Marini and them, the people and them who are organizing um, the music award show. Me and Dr. Adam, these are the two men they ever had, in the first time they ever had, because I have a, 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 a trophy home, a clean sweep. We had a better year than this year. 
what we do a band. And it will take them guys a while before they really get on top of we because mass is culture. And so long as you bring in the cultural part of it, when you're doing the creativity part and the construction part, when a judge is judging you, he's judging craftsmanship and all them things. And it's only we right now coming down with that. So it will take them guys a good while before them guys come close to we. So what is the next step for um, Blondie Board and Friends? Well, right now we're on the drawing board. The only thing we ain't doing right now, I used to do it every carnival night. Every carnival night, I used to advertise the band we're going to bring the next year. The reason why we stop, a lady come to me and she said, Boy, you must stop doing that now, you don't see. SVG players contradicting you every time you bring a name. Them coming with another name to suit. And from the time we stop doing that up to now, them can't come nothing. Since we stopped doing that, them never beat you again. You know, like, so we have a band right now, we're on the drawing board. This year, we plan to start to work in November. Because our artist promised to give our band in October. So we plan to walk in the November, so November we ain't launching, we launch in the first week in February. So, but we will be in our tent walking from November, so them fellas in more trouble, because they, got, they can't catch me. <laughs> so one last question though, um, for the future, for our future as a um, mass, mass band to continue this culture that you speak so much right. of, what, what, what are you doing for the youths in and around your area as it relates to develop honing those skills, those artistic skills to, to push the culture of St. Vincent? Well, I, I'm glad you asked the question because it's a nice opportunity for I answer it now. Now, we went to St. Kitts about eight years ago. The government sent, from a government to government point of view, the government sent four Vincent and St. Kitts to teach the art form. Right? I lucky that I was one the man with Melbourne peeling and the Great Royal Ralph. Went and do that. Now Sink it's the number seven. People didn't realize this and we the number eight. Now, right? Now they have the skill like we the casting calypso and beat pan like we, but it's the people coming into the country, they just check the thing on. Right? And I glad that we do that. But I want to understand how come we could have teach and sink it. And we they write them we own country home. We could do, I I mind it for free. St. Kitts I get paid, but I mind it for free. How come now I can't teach in the school in St. Vincent? Because if you notice now, I just call the mass biscuit and fries. The baby batty with the panty and the feathers. I just call it biscuit and fries, fast food, right? Now, if we allow the mass to go down that way, we gone, we lost because St. Louis have it, Barbados have it, Grenade have it, everywhere you go now they have it, right? So I feel now, time for the we, the government, I will do it for free. Take we. Because I don't know how long I have life, and I don't in my 60s now. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how long I have wrong. So I better take we and put me in the school. I will do it for free. I guarantee to do it for free. And let we teach the art form. Right now they have a program going in school, if you notice. Hats off to the children's way hats thing. Mm -hmm. I just build the hat and them up by me, me and my son. I just charge you over 10 and 15 dollars. You know, I tell the school and them, Prescott, I say, here what to do. Do come up by me and pay me. I better bring me in the school. Let me teach all how to build the hat. Leave all the pattern. So at least the school could turn over and make a dollar. Instead of me. Because come time it come like they bugging me too. <laughs> so I prefer the mistake I do could do for free. Me and can't somebody money part. But if I could leave the legacy behind, it's more important to me. So I will like if they could put the mass in the school, do pay board, do pay board. Board will come and wait for free. In St. Kitts, they was paying me thirty five hundred dollars a month. They pay the four with the most money I ever make out of carnival. But I will do it up here for free. Because I want to see the carnival come back. I can't take the biscuit and fries you guys down the wrong road. Right? And in order for the art form to survive, and if you notice now, carnival is the biggest thing in every other country. Now I remember, I have to tell you this here too, because I remember when I was a dragon 20 something years ago. In the 80s, we had a seminar in town where we do by Union House. Randy Keto was the main feature. And he showed we that in those days, 30 years ago, that was turning over six point something million dollars in 10 days. Now, 30 years after, it's 100 million something supposed to make. So the art man, that money could go in the art form. So the art form, but because we lose the essence of we carnival. So time for somebody to bring it back. And I put up my offer to the government for free. I don't want the money because this is my country, right? And I survive from the art form because I don't work, right? I have a tailor by profession. But because of my art skills, I could so do things for the church, do things when Easter come wrong, do things when Christmas. So I just ain't doing, I just do, we just do wedding too, no? We just do decorations for wedding and all them things, no? people could check we. And sometimes we do it for free because sometimes we dirty people is my partner. <laughs> so, them the kind of thing I like to see come back in the art form. 
So what is your overall view, your overall take on about Vinci Mass? And I'm speaking specifically about Mass itself. What is your take right. on Mass this year? How was it executed? Was it well done? Could it have been done better? If so, you say why. Right, here what Mass, this year I find Mass improving in terms of it's 13 bands. And when I watch the small band, like high voltage the building mass. When I watch Norman and them single links and Norman and them, I see the building mass. Right? It's only a couple bands who now come in, who doing this biscuit and fry mass. But all the rest man, I could see the going the road I want them to go. The building mass themselves competing now with me. You know what? And then what happened now? It could be very good. If they stand a trend and forget about this biscuit and fry thing we will bring in there now. That ain't we thing. Let we get back into we thing. And the time they went to park, because the girls who played me tell me, boy, this is the first time I have a three lap in town. We're doing good. Because if you see, we could only come out of the park after 12 with 500 people. Right? I find that a good thing. And almost all, park it finished before 4 o'clock. Right? So that was a good thing. You could see the mass man making a good effort in terms of making people enjoy themselves and them kind of thing. So we're making a good effort around that line. There. So mass for me was very good. We are the talent, you know. We are the best Calypso. We are the best mass and we are pan. It's only so now that, well, we can't help for that with the artists. The CDC now we need to channel that and take that and mix it up and make it nice. Eh? Because it's not we fault for him making people come in park. Because we have some people playing mass with my band over 30 years, the trend and them coming down and how come they still come in? You know what? But it's we know what to know how to get the people in park. Right? I could I had the idea but I don't have to go and listen to me. But I know I have I've been wrong over fifty years so I know how people used to go in park. Because they cut out all the things that used to be in park. Right? And they gone soak huh? Right? And that is the problem. If you notice, we had a thing named Raga Soka. Beckett and Winston so so and Scarch up to the small house talking to Scarcher. They fight together and the map, you know. Raga Soka. You know, we see this, take it and do. We call it groovy. So we are like we. Um, who sing that soon? Chanel? We are like we. We are like we. That was we thing, people coming to hear Raga. Now we talking about we got groovy Soka. And we groovy Soka is we groovy Soka in Trinidad. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Bo. It's <laughs> the boy. It was a nice and congratulations to you and your team. Well, we go win them. We go beat them all the time, man. Because if nobody ain't coming, so we go beat them all the time. You know the Next year we all in October. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Our natural history includes the long-tailed white tropic birds that migrate to our skies and rock faces, the North Atlantic humpback whale that comes to our warm waters to give birth to and nurse their young, the critically endangered hawksbill turtle and the St. Vincent parrot. These are all creatures that the National Trust seeks to protect for future generations. For more than 40 years, the National Trust has worked to save St. Vincent and the Grenadines' most beloved places, landscapes, and seascapes where great moments of history took place. We work together with communities to value and protect important pieces of our cultural community, national history, and environment, such as the series of decorated Salador pots found in Clear Valley, signifying that St. Vincent's civilization is almost 2,000 years old. We do this all because the next generation needs to know our stories, as they will only inherit the places and species we choose to save today. We urge you to plant a tree under whose shade you never plan to sit. Join the National Trust today. Panorama continues to be an important part of Vinci Mass, and 2016 was no exception. Of the different steel bands competing for the title, Sand Hill Euphonium Senior Band emerged champions for another year. This week on Inside Story, we talk with band leader Tilal Webb.
Mr. Tidal Webb. Welcome to API. Could you just introduce to, to us your pan site? My band name is the Sangley Phonam Seed Orchestra. I'm from Sand Hill and we've been around for 35 years now in the making. Give us a short history of um, Sand Hill Euphoria. Well, the band began in 1981 and we have been there every panorama since then. Our band have never missed a panorama since 1981. Most of the bands have gone and come and meet us there. We have never missed a panorama. We have always been there and right now we have about over 140 members. We have a junior band and a senior band. The junior band have about 60 to 70 members and the senior band have about around the same. So it's a, you know, our compact band of executive, fully with 14 members and we also have um, other committee members including the signing the sports club along with us and board with us. Um, you are the reigning pan, panorama champions, right? Is that correct? Yes, we are the winning pan. So tell us, um, what did you present for Vinci Mass 2016? Well, we came third in the Junior Panama category, which we, you know, we look at the kids. Our Junior Panama band is just to develop our senior band. We use the Junior Band to build players for the senior band and to build the skills also. But in the Senior Panama, that's where the big money really is. That's our main focus. That's, we came first, we have been the six-time Panama champions. Now this year, make it seven. So we were the first band in this country to ever win six Panama on a straight. So I know this year make it seven was a kind of joyous for us and we've been celebrating up to now we're still celebrating. Every night I get the pan yard lime in and them guys bringing drinks and we talking about the panorama. This year the Juno band played Join the Line and Wine by Artist Tishero. And the Cineband played Tony Beckett and Sam Beckett Cyrus, which was really well done. We just wanna thank all the members for putting in a good practice and everything like that. And all the time they put in, thank the parents for sending the kids to the junior practice. You know, it was well done. Could you highlight some of the challenges um, your team would have faced as it leading up to um, Panorama? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the most challenging things we have for Panorama is sponsorship. Because our band is so big, you know, we take a lot of money to bring our band for Carnival. So, but, but we came through well, thanks to Flo, Musty Charitable Trust, our best Inc. who been there for us for a long time, he sponsors our t-shirts and everything. Thank Mr. Wayne Crichton very much. And Flo came in at last minute to really save us because we were really struggling to provide uniform for the senior band and the junior band. It costs about roughly 12 15 thousand dollars to provide uniform for both bands. Because we provide t-shirts plus a stage uniform. So it's kind of expensive and we have 70 players each. Mm. So you know it's kind of buy material, like pay the tailor, same stress, you know. But all in all we want to thank all the sponsors you know, who really came out and helped us. But that was our most challenging thing. Our next thing is transportation. Because these days most of our players kind of come up out of Sinil. So I'm out of signing now, so we find a van to take home players at night when we finish practicing. So it's gonna cost us a bit of money to, you know, transport them back and forth. But it's really good to see the people out of signing coming into signing now and joining the band. We have players I'm down to lay you as far as Mespo playing with us, you know. And it's really good to see them outside the community coming in and joining us. People wanna be winners, we wanna be there in the band that's just showing the greater interest in carnival and the band that's performing the most, you know, and signing has been there. Sen has been doing a great job with the youths and everything and we have been have a well packed program planned for our band so people like to be with people who are organized and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the future of for um Cyan Hill Euphoria? Well currently we have a training program starting on July twenty fifth of this month to train youths again to come and join the band and you know to keep the keep the kids off the street. For the summer holidays, we run a six-week program from July 25th to the end of August. And we have a graduation ceremony, and they got graduate and get a certificate and gifts and whatever and stuff like that. And we normally, right now, we are band going into activities like fundraising for after the carnival. Coach, I like about members active, you know. So we have some fundraising coming up soon. Can't mention all right now, but a few. Looking to have a boat ride sometime in August or later or early September. Depends on how things go, the sponsorship and everything. And we have some other and activities come up sooner or later. As it relates to Pan itself and in St. Vincent's and the Grenadines, we know it has been a, um, a category of space during Vinci Mass that has been struggling for a while. Um, we would have read in the media that there has been a, a great improvement. What is your take on it? Well, this year Panama, except for one floor, we had less band this year for senior Panama, but I would say Pan is improving. 
I know it's getting there. It was it's at fall for a long time and come back really strong now because when I look at the crowd in Cena and Junior Panama, when the bands were backstage, not the bands were in front. You know, I saw a greater turnout and I saw the crowd actually following us because the night before the Panama, Cena Panama, a massive crowd came and watched our band to practice. And there's a vast improvement to see the you know, people on the court of signing watching the band practice and like they were going bands to bands. And the competition they say was so great, I felt at that, that night any band could have won, but I know signing win because we played a better song. <laughs> you know, but I the Panama was really excited, mostly bands stopped the game and came out, you know, and put in a great effort to the Panama. But I find it's improving. I got some work to be done in terms of I think see the secret putting more into the pan. Because for instance, I just always say so many ads we spent on so common which are already been sold. Mm -hmm. Could we put on other shows who needed to develop like, you know, Panorama, Junior Calypso, Miss Carrie and others who really having less crowd. Mm -hmm. They could put some of that money into so, into these ads for these competitions instead of just so common act. So common act already sold itself. And they will need other ads, you know, but that's just my opinion. They won't listen to me anyhow, I take it. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations to you and your team and twenty seventeen you're looking to take back to well to keep the crown oh, at San Hill. Well twenty seventeen is not a greater challenge because I know Star will come hard because it's their fiftieth <laughs> anniversary next year. Okay. But we will keep them coming stronger because we prepare for them too. Mm -hmm. And now we gotta keep our reign and keep our title going. We wanna win at least ten before we give it up, you know. That is the main aim. So we have seven now, so another three more will do us really good. And then you can say, okay, take one. <laughs> and we'll come back and take, take the rest. Thank you so much, Tidal. <laughs> Thank you. Inside Story continues in a moment. Stay with us. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. You're viewing Inside Story, a production of the Agency for Public Information. Taking three titles for Vinci Mass, the fourth dimension sound has proven to be a hit among the Vincentian populace. After capturing the road match, groovy and soca monarch titles, we get a behind the scene look at the three winners and their musical journey. Producer Lester Eroha, Shane Hyper 4000 Husbands, and Chiwali Johnson have become household names after their outstanding performances during the 2016 Vinci Mass. Chiwali, a newcomer to the Soka Arena, is no stranger to the premiere festivities. He is a panist, songwriter, calypsonian, mass builder, and has been playing mass for over 20 years. Winning the Groovy Soka Monarch title after participating for the very first time made his win a special one for him. Shane Hyper 4000 Husbands, who is a radio personality, promoter, disc jockey, songwriter and soon-to-be clothing line designer, is from the vibrant community of Sign Hill and started singing six years ago. He captured the Road March title last year and this year repeated the same feat while adding the Soka Monarch title under his belt. The mastermind behind the sound of both winners is Nigerian-born Lester Iroha. Iroha came to St. Vincent with his family as a child and with an eclectic mix of influences, creates a fresh sound that is synonymous with his studio, Fourth Dimension. Producing music since 2000, his rise to the top has been filled with diverse experiences. Today we learn about the musical paths they've all crossed to now savor the taste of victory. Well, like this might sound cliche, but most like most persons are Michael Jackson. That's the person I used to like to see and listen to a lot. 
um, for locally, um, I used to see clips of Professor, you know, I am a king. I, used to, I, used to, I always remember that performance um, that used to come over um, SVD TV. Um, persons that would have that would have influenced me also uh, Beckett, um, Sule, Aipa, the man age. Uh, so so those are persons locally who would have influenced me. Other than that, um, my grandmother, she was a part of the Anglican Church Choir. She she, she used to sing morning, noon, and night. So. <laughs> That's, that's another influence and um, I grew up more or less being in my father's um, bar so I used to hear a lot of um, Otis Redding and Four Tops and Supremes and that's sort of thing, that's, that's sort of sofa music and sometimes I would see him singing the songs and crying I used to be like, <laughs> I would smile but because of all of that I, I, I always grew up listening to a wide range of musical genres. Musically, I was inspired by my brother my bigger brother, his name is DJ Tyrus, Raphael Husband. You know, yeah. Always spinning records. So I was around music since I was small, so that was a big inspiration, I would say. My first song was um, Rock Party in 2010. It was about five hours recording. I didn't know it was so hard actually recording a song so properly. Um, hearing it on the radio for the first time, I was proud of myself. It was another achievement. My musical background really comes from Steel Pan. I used to play Steel Pan with the Simmons and Grammar School back in, it started in 96. Been playing Steel Pan ever since, you know, with grammar school, then on to Rhythmix, Steel Orchestra, then Starleaf Steel Orchestra. So. You know, that's where I really got the, the deeper understanding. Hyper 4000! <laughs> Something for the girls, eh? No, I didn't have a full studio. At the time, it was just a computer program. Because as I said, you know, as I was getting into it, then I realized that it's not just simple like or get a mic, you know what I mean? The mics that you use in a studio is different from a mic you would use on stage. Those are dynamic mics. Studio mics are condenser mics that are powered actually. So then you would have to have an interface to go with your mic. And this is how I started learning. Okay, so I have to get a mic, I have to get an interface, I have to get the interface linked with the program. And that's how I, you know? But my first actual hit production was Show Me Your Sexiness by Scorpion. That was in 07, I think. I didn't have a full studio then. I did the production. Scorpion liked the, the, the music. He actually fit a song that he actually wrote. And then he was willing to actually take the song and go by Mark Cyrus, who actually did the actual recording, mix and mastering on the track. So that was my, you know, that was my first radio success. It has been, it definitely wasn't easy, you know, um, because at that time, I would say my production style was kind of unorthodox, you know, some of the sounds and, you know, tones that I used to use wasn't really, at that time, really acceptable in soca music, you know. Some of the comments I would keep getting is that, oh, those aren't soca tones, those, are, those don't sound, you know, a bit in too soca, but then fast forward to where we are now, Everybody using the same set of tones, everybody doing the same thing. So for me, I just look at it as a, you know, I was just ahead of the time, you know, but it was a case where you have to, you have to, you have to, when you do a production, you have to now sell it to an artist in terms, not just for the money I'm talking about, actually selling the concept of the rhythm, the music. And that in itself wasn't always an easy task, especially coming from a producer who didn't have any big name, or major hits behind him. Yeah, so it was it was a it was a tough tough battle. Well it, it was it was a rough 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 transition especially coming over from the DJ side to the artist side. I had a lot of struggles like um with co-workers, especially my boss, big up my boss, Luke Boy, 
as you know he he it, it was a real tumbling stone getting over that one with him you know what i mean he, he didn't ever think i was a singer i was up for this artist stuff he always wanted me to be a dj and think he always saw me in the light of just being a good dj a great dj um it it, it was rough and you know what i mean his criticism pushed me a lot um, alongside, you know, other fans and stuff, because enough people was like, I had a breakout hit in 2011 that was Snapchat. It did good on the road, you know what I mean? Well, people loved it on the road. We didn't, we didn't place anything in the road march or anything with it. I guess as a new artist coming out, but it inspired me a lot. Especially, it gave me the drive to really go for that road march come because I really have a passion for the road march. I like to hear my music on the road. I like to see masqueraders, you know, have a fun time to my music. From I, I would say from 2012 to 2013, I really took the art form very seriously. Did my research, you know, try to find melodies, use proper metaphors and all that stuff in the music. And we came out with um, Show Me A Walk Up, which was a slash buoy and feel. And we placed third for the road match, and from there it was uphill. Rural um, uh, let me try and summarize it. Um, I had written a, a rum song, well, a drunk song, and I kind of placed it on the back burner and I had told us that I wanted to record with him and I told him I, I told him yeah I was coming I was coming and me and my virgin I, I said you know what I need to write a song and he was like you know what do a rum song you know those hours hit in Simonson so we we started and so on and at one point I said uh, scientist botanist I'm a rumist <laughs> so a song was written then and when we took it to the studio, we had, I, well, I had to rewrite the song. I only kept the because I'm a rummies. So we had to do um, some rewriting. I wrote the, the, the new lyrics the following morning, uh, roughly in about five minutes or so at work. And I was like, Lester, yeah, I have it here now. So went back into the studio and I was a bit shy. But the thing about going to fourth dimension when you go there to record, it's, it's also um, a, a learning session. You know, he, it's not an environment where you just go, you pay money, you record, and he just gives you. He he explains certain things to you. So it, he's also like a mentor of mine. So that's why I'm so grateful that I even went to that studio in the beginning. And as you could see, it, it paid off because one of the main things for me was to make sure that I listened and understood what he was saying to me. So in terms of how to go about um, projecting your voice and so on, the actual recording process. That's something I learned also, being at four dimension. Uh, it, 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 I had my plan, you know, it, it, it was, I had my plans. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't a surprise to me, I had my plans, and it's not too different from DJing. It's like DJing in Soka Monarch, it's not too different. I'm not, you know, I'm accustomed to the crowd, so, but it's always a great feeling, especially when you get the energy from the people. It's always a great feeling. You know, I, at a point I was there, my performance, and I was, yes, mission accomplished. Like halfway in between singing my song, I was like, yes, mission accomplished. That I, my heritage actually does have play a big role in, in my love for music. I was exposed to a lot of um, different genres of music, you know, from my father, who was a big music enthusiast, a, a big love of music, you know, so I was exposed to from salsa, Latin music, you know, to classical music, to jazz, to calypso and soca as well. So it wasn't the case that oh, I learned of, of soca when I got here, you know, those were things that I already grew up listening to, you know, Sparrow and Kitchener, I already had knowledge of them prior to coming here. So that definitely, and then also with traditional Nigerian music as well, you know, so all of that. And I always tell people this, you have to be around people. 
in that setting. So I, most people would know that I'm always in the parties, I'm always, you know, in the happening vibe, you know, because at the end of the day, you can't be cocooned and try to, pre try to produce and present to the people what you think they want when in reality, that's, n that's not where the music is going or where the trends are going, you know? So you always have to have your finger on the pulse and you have to be in it really to understand it. So sometimes as a producer, you have to put yourself out there, you know? You see, what, see, what, see what people are responding to, you know, the type of flavor, the type of music. They say, oh, they, they, they're more inclined to a jab jab. Oh, they're more inclined to a groovy style, you know? Oh, they're more inclined to an Afrobeat, you know? But you have to be out there, you have to have the feel, you have to see how people respond to it, you know, when it's played. That, that, that's what gives you the idea, then you know now, okay, I want to do something a bit like this, but I want to put my own flair to it, you know? So at the end of the day, you know that the people will still accept it. When you go to Leicester Studio, Fourth Dimension Studio, it's, it's not just... You, you feel at home because he, he what he did with me, because I could only speak for myself, what he did with me, he, he sat me down and he explained to me certain aspects of the music business. Um, how do you go about even writing a song or constructing a melody or what, what persons look for? You understand what the quality and that's all the thing, how you brand and all of that, how you plan and so, for me, it, it was it was also going to school because I was learning at the same time. It wasn't just me writing a song and going there and he built him building a track, and I just sing at it and I'm gone. You know, he explained to me that he makes sure that you know whatever comes out of his studio is is the best quality possible. Yeah, and also ah uh, he long hours. I could tell you for a fact that sometimes Lester does be in that studio hours upon hours going into the morning working. So um, what sets him apart for me is um, his approach with the artists, his musical influences and his work ethic. And you know, I, I, those are the kind of things that, that separates persons from each other. A lot of persons don't even know that he, he doesn't just build tracks, you know, he, he's also a gifted vocalist. You know, on, on a number of songs, he would be doing back vocals. Um, he, he has an ability to write and construct melodies on the spot as well. So it's not just him building a track. Out of this whole boy, it's like, you might watch, you might watch less than the road. But boy, he's like a, a walking, sleeping zombie. I, I, I doubt this man does sleep. Because we just be in the studio like from about 10 in the night until like 4 in the morning. Mostly, mostly every day, mostly every day, doing songs, building rhythms, train out ideas, who could help from who. It was a lot of hard work getting to that point, um, trying to push the song as, pos as much as possible, trying to push the brand, um, trying to do my best at every show, whether or not I came on early or not, and st stuff like that. Um, so when you get to that point and you realize all this hard work and all when you, you emptied all your accounts to actually put on a pre presentation and you hear yourself, your name called for number one. I actually didn't even know what to say. I, I do. I was I was just like that. So I, at points I could only point on persons who who knew the struggle and who knew what I wanted to do. And I was like, this is for you, you know, yeah, I told you. You know, um, I knew that we definitely was, was gonna bring home a title this year because we worked extremely hard, you know? But if you, if you were to tell me before that I would bring home the tree, you know, I didn't, I didn't really actually see that coming. But at the end of the day, we put in a lot of work, a lot of work. And what I try to tell people is, they look at me and they say, how do I do it? Because I don't produce full time. You know, I do that after, after working hours. So they ask, how do, you, how, do you, how do you put out so much music? And it's all about timing and you can't 
I don't wait till Carnival to start producing for Carnival. You know, through all this track rummies that was done since November. You know, I made sure I did that because I actually had a trip to Nigeria for Christmas. So I made sure that, you know, at least that track was finished and done before I even left. So when you do that now, it gives you enough space now to actually promote the song, you know. You can work on strategies on releasing, timing, um, how you're going to push the song before release, after release, you know. So I tend to urge a lot of artists, don't wait until Carnival. Don't wait until Carnival. You always have to have in mind your plan set and then just execute. I mean, you gotta get money to get resources and do stuff, but our, our mission is far away from money. Man. Our mission is far away from money. It's all about building the art form and building the future. You know, getting St. Vincent out there. Just, just, we just over another hurdle, more to go. I know, man, I, I have that happy feeling. You know, it's, it's, it's success, so you must feel happy, but it's like the, the mission is stop there. We need to carry the music further outside our boundaries as far as it could go. Like, you know, I got a big up Skinny Fabulous and Kevin Little. They are good examples. They push Vinci music, you know, so we're trying to reach them borders. One job! How about the last one set is with us? What we touch you road, they know we fast. They don't know so we mad. They know so we sick. Tonight we are going to give them their legs. When Inside Story continues, we will find out what's new with Scorpion visiting a man. We'll be right back. Buy some fresh Caribbean fish for me. Don't bother with him, man. You buy some cooks for me, man. Let me tell you what I want. Let me tell you what I want. I'm moving to the food side. Yeah, man. You see me? Go on, I'm at the food side. Behavior like this is one show way of chasing our guests away from St. Vincent and the Grenadines and killing your own business. Stop visitor harassment. Your business is important and so is your approach. Let's all work together to ensure our visitors feel comfortable while visiting St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A message from the Ministry of Tourism and the Industry. Tourism today. Seanel Scorpion Williams is one of our local soca and calypso artists who you can say grew up in the business having been involved in the art form from his primary school days. He had a chat with the API about his involvement in the business and also his wishes for the development of the art form. I have here with me, um, and correct me if I'm going wrong with this, Chanel Williams, Chanel? Yeah. Chanel, Scorpion Williams. Most of us know the Scorpion, right? Yes. I used to always say Scorpion until I realized it's really Scorpion. Why the name though? That, that, that particular? Well, well the, the, the name... We're pronouncing it. Yes, the name, the pronunciation really came from, you know, maturity. You know, there is a lot of talk about Calypso's dying. Right. Young people are not. Well, participating in Calypso, right. and one of the things I respect you and Chanel McKenzie for, y'all actually, you could say grew up in the business, if yes. you want to say that. Right. So, let's talk about back then as opposed to, I don't know if you pay attention to Junior Calypso now, yes, to know, like, 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 like um, what, what, to make a comparison. Well, you know, okay, like, alright, back in the day, I think, you know, because there wasn't so much distraction around the art for me, we were just concentrating on, on quality music, it was just the, the, the Junior Calypso, which was which was like maybe one of the first big major events for Carnival. So you, you find all the youngsters, parents, teachers, yeah. villagers, everybody event. come to the show. So it was a big event. It was a, it was a chance for, for a child to shine, especially for his school. And, um, you know, so uh, persons like myself, uh, Chanel McKenzie, I remember man came with Papa Das. Yeah, or, those guys, um, man came with us Even my cousin, well, I just recently, a couple of years ago, found out that she was my cousin, Liz Jack. Lizai Jack. Ah, Lizai, oh yeah, 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 yeah. my friend too. Yeah, that's my, yeah, that's my cousin. Um, you know, she, she, you know, we were doing 
you know, our, our, our best day, not knowing what we were really into, you know what I'm saying? We thought it was just an opportunity for you to, um, you know, just go and sing, but not knowing that you were really contributing to the culture, you know what I'm saying, and the development. To some extent, making a career. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, now, to compare it now is, is a little bit different because there isn't any structure in place, you know what I'm saying, to, to help these youngsters, you know, in a serious way. Why do you say way. that? Okay, for example, I mean, just think about how many years that we have this carnival competition. Think about how many years. How many youngsters from my time still singing today? Think no. about it. No. I could come to myself and Shannon McKenzie. That's true. You know what I'm saying? And that is to show you that, you know, if, if there wasn't an ambitious person like Mr. Venner, who, who saw my talent there in, in the Junior College and then brought me to the National Youth Band, then you don't know if I would be saying it. But there, there's also criticism that Vincent Chance can't write, and you would hear it sometimes in some of the calypsos, you would hear it thrown out, and some people would say that in some of the songs, you hear people say that, that they're, they're actually criticizing right. Vincent Chance writers. Do you agree with that? Because you write your songs, don't you? Yes. Right, and that, those songs are quite good, and I, I think I've been told, um, well, I spoke with um, Buster Ski, he, he was one of those young, upcoming so he told me he also writes his own songs. Right. Well, right, so as I said, it, it depends on who, um, you know, was willing to help you. Oh, okay. It was not necessarily a structure set in place to, to help youngsters or to, 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 to support artists who perform in Junior Calypso to say, oh, we're going to take these group of people and, and help develop their, their talent. It was just some ambitious persons like Mr. Venner, as I mentioned. Okay. And I really give thanks to Mr. Venner because, you know, um, he saw my talent, as I said, in the Junior Calypso and he brought me there. So I developed my writing skills there, you know what I'm saying? And musical um, skills. And my musical skills as well, you know what I'm saying? So with, with that being said, I've done the same for a few people like Hans, you know what I'm saying? I was the one who, you know, who... He's a good singer. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah. and, you know, that's my bloodline too, but it was more so seeing the talent in him and, you know, and teaching him what I learned, you know what I'm saying? And now he is on his own and, you know, and of course you could see that he's growing. In but why did you find time to do that? Because you're also apart from in the so the calypso calypso kaiso right. you do raga soca right. and at times you even probably do a little hype right the the, the soca or yes. the power soca what we're calling it now so doing those and then you're still finding time to nurture people how you balance that well to be honest it's something that i do every single day every day as often i mean every day non-stop i may take a fit to break but then i can't if I do that, I get frustrated. I always have to be writing. Um, I have, have to be composing songs. And of course, you know, I mean, people, youngsters will, will call you, hit you up on Instagram or, or Facebook, want you to help them. And this year I wrote um, a song for uh, Brianka. She came third in the high school. You know, so I have a lot of youngsters who are also helping. Yes. That is why I give back because persons, like as I said, like Mr. Venan, to get up on, their self, on themselves to give me that opportunity. So that's yes. why that is why I do the same. You know what I'm saying? You always have to show show respect to persons who, who give you that particular opportunity and um, and actually, you know, doing the same because you have to always remember, never forget where you come from. Oh, we're gonna get to that. Right. That is you know true. You you could yes. never yeah. because once you have received that, you yeah. receive it, you pass it on. Because exactly. I give attribute to some people who helped me in the media. Right. And I would also like to pass on. I Definitely. think that's one of the things that's missing, right. probably in the industry. I mean, you're making an effort to pass it on. Just like how you receive it. Maybe if some more soca artists, calypso artists come out. Because probably we have the youngsters who like it, but they don't have the guidance. Well, I understand what you're saying. For example, you know, when you're thinking about a career, you have to be very careful in terms of your image, what you say. Okay, you, you, you cannot say something and, and doing the opposite or, or, or saying something that is not necessarily, uh, you know, building up uh, or is not um, good for airplay or to sing for kids, for example. And, uh -huh. and then, you know, you have kind of a song that is popular on the radio, whatever it's singing about, like, wrong. You cannot sing that in a junior college or competition, you know what I'm saying? So you have to be very careful as to what, there's a time and place for everything, you know what I'm saying? But again, you have to balance your music. But I'm not here to actually speak about other people's, uh, or other people's right. you know, 
mission, but like like me, because it would be it, it would be unfair for me to speak about someone because I don't want to. Sp I want to do that because I don't want no, to offend. No, we don't know enough. Right, right. right. But we're just making a general. I comment, understand. Right. But but for me personally, I I see myself as a a growing coconut tree. You know what I'm saying? And I want to. Of I'm course. Grow real tall, you know? Yes. <laughs> But you have to shed branches. Oh yeah. And then your nuts, your fruits, you know, get time to mature, the water gets sweeter. sweeter. Mm -hmm. And then the jelly is really is, nice. I like the jelly. Yes. Right. And then the jelly becomes a little harder. More tasty. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I see my, my life right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna be disappointed, you know, if I if I'm if I, if I am not performing in the future in, in, in soca or rock or calypso. You know what I mean? Because I mean Life is a is, is a is a is a is a long road and it's a big world out there, you know what I'm saying? So I'm 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 just growing, you know what I'm saying? But you also because the other day I see you did a cover song for um Chronix? Chronix. Yes. I actually prefer that version. Right. And not because I know you, but I when I listen to it I actually prefer yeah. that version. So now you see it's not just the so you just I would round you up as a cultural person. Yes, I am. And many maybe. times people come to me and say Scarping as a and I say, no, I'm not, I'm an artist, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, and I think that could be the reason why sometimes I get a lot of licks in competition because, you know, some people label me as a rock super singer, you know what I mean? But it, yes, it, it, they it, just it, put a label on you yeah, and have a good song Sometimes, as I said, you have to forgive people with the way they think sometimes. Because they, they brand boom money like that too. Right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, so you, you cannot really go in everybody's mind and, and fix them. You can't, you're not God, you know what I'm saying? We get to the video, never forget. But I think both of your songs this year, this year, Mama Lou or the conversation, call, call from Miss Lou, call, call from Miss Lou, and never forget. If they tend to have to some extent the same theme in terms of, okay, you're looking back, an older one will tell you, don't forget where you come from, right. and Miss Lou is telling you all these things. Where you got this inspiration from this year? Okay, to well, do it in that way. All right, so like, okay, let's start with Miss. Well, the call from Miss Lou. Right. No, it, it was not a call from Miss Lou. It was. It was me listening to the commentary or uh, the post things from the general yes, election. Yes. And um, Kai was not here, I, I left a little earlier. And um, it was I was it was very disgusting, you know what I'm saying? The comments, you know what I mean? Uh, people if if you if you're on a on a platform and you know you're addressing um, you know the issues in our country and the way forward, we don't have to be personal. You know what I mean? I mean, if you on, on in terms of opposing sides, you know what I'm saying? You you, you cannot disrespect an, an ex human being because you want to get mileage. You know what I'm saying? And not only for the 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 the, the, the leaders, I'm, I'm I'm speaking about I'm speaking about, but the, the whole St. Vincent and the Grenadines, because of course you know everybody gonna have their own political views, whatever, whatever. But I, I don't think that we should really go. We should not have gone. On, on that road, um, disrespecting each other, and um, you know, and of course, not only that part, the, the vandalizing in our, our environment, defacing our environment, um, letting down our country. Exactly, letting down our country. You know, what I mean, uh, so much other things. You know, what I mean, uh, I, m so Miss Lu came after finish written the song, and yeah, and I was like, how can I put this? Because I didn't want person to feel that like I was attacking any political because I did not mention any political party and you know I was trying to make the song as neutral as possible in terms of not saying this or for I just speak about what happened generally uh, around um, election time in St. Vincent in the Caribbean in the world you know what I mean and, and most of the things that I, that I sang about um, are some of the things that actually happened you know so and and then never forget came at a time when um, I wasn't even thinking about it. Trust me, you know, because all these things are in my head. You know, now, the, the, the backing track, I had a different song, and then um, I would, it would have taken me a bit of time to get the permission from my international artist. Cause I was doing like a parody or cover, and then um, then I say in the meantime, let me write something else different, and then boom. I remember when I had my food eat. Okay, where I come from. Never forget, you know. So you know, because all these things are in your head, you know what I'm saying. Um, and I will go back to this teaching, um, train up a child in the way he or she grow. So that when he becomes old, that is depart. true. That and is, that so, is really true. So it, it, it took me so much years 
to actually sing about it. I mean, we would speak about these things, but you know, so when it came to song, it was something that was already marinated in me. And, and as I tell people, sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna sing about. Because it's getting a lot of reviews. I've seen well, the launch, yes. of, well, I've seen the video was thrown out on Facebook. I've yeah, it was viral. It. Exactly, and then I would read the comments, and I think, and it, it also gives United a lot, people are actually hungry for something different. Thank because you the much. comments you're getting is like oh so good and i'm like yes we need to All pay positive. attention to what people say because they're telling you indirectly what they want exactly and and you know and this thing about uh you know like for example they were saying that kids don't want to hear calypso nonsense no that, that's true no you give them a calypso that they can listen to and relate to they would they would, they would precisely listen. and when when i went i was doing a tour um mm -hmm. it was karedi i went to Various primary school, and then I went to I went to Evesham and to um, Stony Ground, went to Stubbs. Uh, uh, there was some bit more. I went to Brighton, and then when I got there, I mean all the other school they were singing something, but when I got there, um, Brighton had have about maybe 200 and something children, and every single one of them was singing song. What for? I was like, wow. You know, when I got there, I was like, what do you listen to the initial song? This is not a song, we just have a one line inside it. They were singing the song, and I was like, wow. You know, and then, you know, um, I got a call from, from Sherry. Sherry Dan, the she would like to do a video for my song. I was like, okay. And she said she had written a script. I was like, for what? Because we never spoke you know, about it. And then I have already written a script as well. So I was like, serious? So I said, read your script for me. And then she said, you read yours. And then I, and I read mine. And then when she read it, read hers, it was similar in terms of the, the impact and the, the you know what I'm saying the, the points were were right there and I was like wow and then we sat down and you know to the shoot I had Kevin Rodriguez out uh, the group group of boys from Billy Primary School Big Up Richard and his friends the, the guy the little guy great actor and um, you know and then we put this together and then the Friday around eight I you know we, we launched it on um, on Facebook and in like about two hours, my phone was until next morning, continuous like for four days straight. I think that is where, as we wrap up now, I think that is where you would see the ones who really make it, the ones who are passionate, who were able to withstand all of this, right. whether they call it um, discrimination, whatever they want to call right. it, and yet they're still there making their contribution. And so sure. the people who are like that, you know, we say thank you, because I personally feel- 26 years, uncle. People like you, thank you again. Yeah. You know, because I personally feel a, a country that has lost contact with its culture, it's like it's a, a lost, lost country. soul, yeah, yeah, it's definitely, really lost. Definitely. And we really have to at some point hold on to it as you say with your passion. So, you know, I thank you for staying in the business and I hope that you can take that passion, spread it and help a little bit more the young people and yes. you know, we get it and we keep Def going. Yeah, definitely. And, and I, I want to thank all my fans who have been supporting me over the years. Um, as I said, look at the video, never forget, share it to the friends. This is a video that's going to live for generation after I'm gone. Never forget because this is what this is why we are here and we need to know where we come from, we need to know our culture, we need to know our past, we need to know about, about our four parents, we need to know about our food, we need to know about our ways, the things that we used to do so that we don't lose it by just adapting or just, you know, just grabbing what we forced us. We need to find it for ourselves, we need to know it and share it and live it. Thank you, that's true and appreciate it. Yes. All right, thanks. <laughs>